Previously, I taught you all in the last series of Super Doomspire on how to use the default weapons provided to you in Super Doomspire. If you haven't seen this video yet, I recommend going in the description to find it or the old video. This video will introduce you to some of the tips practiced here as you might need to know some previous information on how to use it. Let's get started. So it's been a while since I last done this series, and presumably you've learned a bit of it. You've gotten better at the tricks and you want to improve your skill to the finest to get some of the golden items, or maybe complete some more casts, or learn how to be a better player. In this guide, I will also improve on a couple of things that have been added since then, such as new weapons and more in the best weapons to choose, as well as the new game modes, such as Infection, Roundcat Rally, and more. In this guide, I will also discuss the best maps to pick and certain strategies on certain maps as well. In short, you know how to play the game now, now let's learn how to win the game. You'll win the game through a series of processes, including spawns in certain modes, how to knock out players using lunge and hitboxes, and more. We're going to learn all this in today's episode of How to Play. Let's get started. My name's Tanuki Alex, and this is our series of Player's Guide, which we teach you, the player, and how to play games. Yo, what's up, Hashtag Nerd Squad, and welcome back to another video. But before we get started in this video, make sure to subscribe for the latest Roblox drama, news, tips and tricks, and more. You can do so by pressing the red button over there, and turn on notifications so that way you never miss out on one of my videos. We are so close to 1.5k, and that would be incredible if we could get to that goal by around April. Since many of you have time, I'd also appreciate if you'd watched my other videos, or if you haven't, watched the video to previous this one so that way you have a bit more knowledge on the situation for Super Doomspire. In today's video, we are going to set criteria, and I will provide timestamps in the description so that way you can find a certain section if you're looking for it just to pause. I'd recommend pausing the video multiple times. I will not go fast, I will go slower so that way you can introduce yourself to some of the points and it will be easier to understand. Through our process of order, we will be building on each tip which can correlate to other tips. These include, firstly, the game modes. There are two types which include normal Doomspire, Classic and two teams, also known as red versus blue in the previous updates, in which each tower is given double members in spawn capture, which is only available in VIP servers, and the three party modes, which include Rocket Rally, Infection, and Blow Stuff Up. Blow Stuff Up is pretty much self explanatory, so I will be skipping that mode. Party modes also vary much differently in rules and set instructions, so we will be taking a bit more time to explain those. Secondly, we will be reviewing hitboxes, spawns, and more, which are extras that can help especially in your coin collection in assisting in achieving tasks. It also leads to a better overall achievement on your scorecard at the end of a match, which leads to a better outtake of coins. Lastly, I'll cover anything else you may need to know and we will conclude. Let's get started with our game modes. In starting with the classic game modes, let's start with the absolute original, which is classic. Firstly, let's start. Classic mode has four teams, red, yellow, green, and blue. All of the teams are against each other, and it is essentially a four versus four. In the classic game mode, as well as the other classic game modes, all weapons are provided, essentially five of them. To win the game mode, you must destroy all enemy spawns and then eliminate all players. Sometimes, due to players surviving, it can result in a tie between two teams. It is not dictated by the amount of players, rather than which base survives, but which team is still left after the timer runs out. Now, there are multiple strategies to winning classic mode, which can also be used in two teams, also known as red versus blue. The first way is to have a sequential order of spawns. Spawns are your key to winning. However, to achieve MVP, get the most kills. Target the top spawns first, which make it harder for players to easily move to other bases, taking them a bit of extra time, which gives you the opportunity to almost cage them in. Then, go layer by layer, using mainly bombs and rockets to destroy to make an opening to let the spawn fall out. Spawn coinage can vary from 3 to 6 coins, and it is ideal to not leave a spawn behind. This method can take very long, 
but it is the best method for earning the most coins in a short period of time, which will reflect on your scorecard. Keep in mind using this method you may get less KOs, but your scorecard will reflect better in giving extra coins, as KOs vary in coins. Once finished with all the spawns, this will render the tower completely useless, enabling you to knock out the team. Secondly, the most popular way to win Classic is to go to the bottom of the tower. Think of the tower as Jenga. By knocking out key points such as support trusses, etc., which maps vary, you can knock out the entire tower eventually. Keep an eye on the five bottom support, which is what you will need to have knock out all the spawns all knock out at once. This strategy, however, will not be reflected on your scorecard, and it is better to have a higher chance of victory in leading your team to victory instead of yourself. Let's move on to the two teams game mode. The two teams game mode intercorrelates with classic. As a result of two teams, there is two towers for each team, totaling to 28 spawns. As a result of these spawns, two teams is one of the best game modes to pick for beginners due to minimal spawn shortage. Methods with classic can work with two teams. However, due to less teams, it makes it so that way there's two teams working on two towers instead of four, sometimes having a disadvantage for your scorecard and working towards team effort. The best method to use, because in order to win, your team needs to take out two towers instead of one, is the bottom base method. Make sure to also leave a mark by rocketing the spawns, even if it doesn't fall into the void. Sometimes the system will glitch in this mode, making it so that way you get a lot of money as the tower falls down. Let's move on to the party game modes. The party game modes include Infection and Roundcat Rally. Let's first start with Infection. Infection has two teams, Zombie and Survivor. One player is chosen as the zombie to infect the rest of the server at random. Infection is done through the zombie killing the survivor, which in turn makes the survivor a zombie. Key about this game mode is strength in heavy and numbers. The zombie also has perks such as higher jump and 2 times speed. The zombies also have half health, which can be used to the survivor's advantage. As a survivor, ideal weapons to use are larger weapons such as the greatsword, etc. and the normal sword. These weapons knock out the 30 health points that a zombie has with a lunge. As a survivor, make it your key to jump a lot so that way it can outnumber the zombie speed. Target the zombie's hitbox, which is the center near left, and lunge using R, the middle, when a zombie is walking. The lunge is the fastest way to knock out both zombies and survivors, making the sword the most ideal weapon to use for both teams in this mode. The key to being a survivor is strength in numbers. When going after zombies, team up with two players. Use larger weapons to knock out hordes of zombies, and it is effective if you are the last player left to use the cage trial near the end of a map to isolate yourself. Remember to constantly click if you are in that and to not block your view by using a normal trowel. As a zombie, ideal weapons to use are the ice sword, normal, or reskin swords, and especially effect swords. Your speed can be taken into advantage when your survivor is slowed down, making it harder for the survivor to hit your hitbox. Make it as a point as a zombie to constantly jump so that way the survivor makes you harder to hit. Keep an eye on your health as zombies have very low health. Walk in a zigzag pattern as well to make the survivor harder to hit you with super ball weapons as well. As a zombie, make sure to also hit the pain glass to give you and your team a clear advantage to get in the tower, which is also where survivors hide. The last game mode, Roundcat Rally, is about defense and aim. The game mode is 5 minutes long and the purpose is to use the two tools provided to you, trowel and a sword, to defend your base. The key of Roundcat Rally is to reflect bullets, hence the nap name, Tennis. To reflect bullets, slice your sword to have the bullet change color of the bullet. Sounds will also come up depending on what streak you have in reflecting the bullet. To get the Roundcat Super Bowl, get 10 wins. The Roundcat Super Bowl has a higher roll time as well. The best way to win is to aim around the walls and aim for the spawns using third person, which will help you get to the spawn easier. Now that we've covered all the game modes, let's move on to extra tips and tricks. are a key part of Super Doomspire. To take out a spawn, use a rocket to loosen it up and then place a bomb where you'd like it to go. Keep in mind, physics in this game work opposite, so if you place a bomb to the right, the spawn will go to the left. Bombs can be used for bomb jumps as mentioned in the previous guide. The best weapons for each category are Doomspire, 
normal sword and tennis racket, as well as the shadow blade, which provides a light, fast playstyle. Swords and sticky bombs, which can stick to a player, therefore causing a KO and accuracy. For the rocket, I would use a shadow weapon or a scope, which has higher blast radius. Super balls may vary. For infection, heavier weapons work best on both sides, as well as reskins of weapons or the ice sword. For round cat rally, the tennis racket is exceptional. The sword's ball can go further distance, which helps reflect. The scope rocket would be ideal for that mode. The best trial to use is just the normal truss, which gives you quite an advantage. This concludes our Super Doom Spire tips and tricks number two. If you'd like to see more of my content, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Oh, yeah. Yeah.